What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy. Welcome back to our Bible study. But a uh, little disclaimer before we get into it. Kind of some adult content within this chapter. Just putting it out there. It's in the Bible, but not exactly the most appropriate stuff for kids. Anyway, so uh, we've got Leviticus 18 lined up for this time around. And uh, yeah, as you can see from the chapter heading here, uh, getting into like adult relational things and what isn't is not okay from that standpoint. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my commentary as PG as possible until we actually get into the not so PG stuff here. But anyway, yeah. Um, again, the the general theme I've been finding from Leviticus is just like general purity and cleanliness and, and, and things of that sort. And I guess this is basically how to be sexually clean and pure and whatnot. So, without further ado, here we go. Leviticus 18. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. I am the Lord your God. So do not act like the people in Egypt, where you used to live, or like the people of Canaan, where I am taking you. You must not imitate their way of life. You must obey all my regulations and be careful to obey my decrees, for I am the Lord your God. If you obey my decrees and regulations, you will find life through them. I am the Lord. Okay, so this is just a, a broader declaration to the people saying, all right, don't, don't be like the other people that you've seen or will see. Just follow my laws because I am your God. I am the God, creator of the world, <laughs> you know. I am the only one who's worthy of worship. You are my chosen people. This is how I am telling you you should act. And if you don't follow that, you're not really, you know, setting yourselves up very well to be my chosen people. You're not making it look like you're my chosen people to those around you, especially if you act just like they do. So anyway, uh, moving along, verse 6. You must never have sexual relations with a close relative, for I am the Lord. Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. Uh, okay, like, also, that's just awkward. <laughs> Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives, for this would violate your father. So, yeah, back then, having multiple wives was a thing. I mean, it still is in certain cultures, but even among the Israelites, it was not uncommon for a man to have multiple wives, especially if you consider examples like, you know, Abraham, he had his wife, uh, although servant girl Hagar wasn't quite so much his wife, but um, then you wind up with situations like um, Jacob, where, you know, <laughs> He wound up actually legitimately having two wives, uh, Leah and Rachel. So anyway, uh, so far it's like, okay, do, don't, do not have relations of this kind with, you know, your mother or a similar figure. No parental figures, basically. At least, you know, we've covered female parental type figures. Uh, verse 9. Do not have sexual relations with your sister or half-sister, whether she is your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born into your household or someone else's. So, yeah. So far, it's all been family 
at least to some extent. So yeah, th to us nowadays, especially in like, you know, modernized culture, a lot of this just seems obvious. Like why would this need to be stated? Um, but that's really only because it's been made common practice because of, you know, religious views like this, but also because like, people who have engaged in sexual relations of these sorts before, it's been shown that there's a greater likelihood of, like, physical defects and things like that. Plus, there's just a bunch of awkwardness around it, you know? Anyway. Uh, verse 10. Do not have sexual relations with your granddaughter, whether she is your son's daughter or... Or your daughter's daughter, for this would violate yourself. I'd, I'm a little unsure what exactly it means by violate yourself there. I mean, the implication is that, like, this is your own bloodline, your own relative, descendant even. So, again, like, family. No. <laughs> Um, verse 11, do not have sexual relations with your stepsister, the daughter of any of your father's wives, for she is your sister. So now we've extended beyond just pure bloodlines and it's like, okay, anybody that's family, even not directly blood related, don't, don't do these things. Uh, verse 12, do not have sexual relations with your father's sister, for she, she is your father's close relative. So, aunt on the dad's side. Uh, do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, for she is your mother's close relative. Again, aunt on the mom's side. Still related. Uh, do not violate your uncle, your father's brother, by having sexual relations with his wife, for she is your aunt. Okay, so now it's not just blood-related aunt, but aunt by marriage. Uh, do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife, so you must not have sexual relations with her. So, yeah, more situations now where it's, you know, bringing in the idea of, okay, it's not just blood relatives. Like, you're probably messing up the family dynamic as a whole, if you're engaging in these relations with pretty much anybody in any part of your family. <laughs> That's what's been covered so far. Um, do, do, do. Trying to remember what verse we were at. I think we did 15. I think we're at 16 now. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife, for this would violate your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter, and do not take her granddaughter, whether her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, and have sexual relations with her. They are close relatives, and this would be a wicked act. Footnote at take, what? Uh, okay. Or do not marry. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like... It's it's not really getting into this, but there's an all-around kind of practical component of a lot of these as well. Because, like, again, makes the whole dynamic so awkward and possibly troublesome. And, like, honestly, if you're, if you're having sex with anybody that's not your own wife, that's just causing problems between you and your wife. No matter what the situation is, or it, maybe I should say spouse, broaden it out a bit. This seems to be focused more so on like, you know, males engaging with females, probably more so because this was, at least at the time, a more male dominant society uh, and, you know, people group. So, yeah, anyway. Um... 
do, 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 verse 18. While your wife is living, do not marry her sister and have sexual relations with her, for they would be rivals. Um, again, Jacob kind of didn't follow this. And, I mean, the whole for they would be rivals bit became obvious <laughs> because of Jacob then marrying both of them. So, eh. Well, it might have happened previously, the it, 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 God's like, okay, yeah, no, this this was not. It caused some issues. Then, let's not have those issues happen again. And although I do find it interesting that the caveat, while your wife is living, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily completely ridiculous idea if your wife dies sister is unmarried to then get married to the sister but uh, definitely <laughs> yeah no it, th th there's as it's laid out here that would just cause all sorts of complicated dynamics and issues of this sort them being rivals and whatnot, at the very least. Anyway, uh, verse 19. Do not have sexual relations with a woman during her period of menstrual impurity. That was kind of explained back a couple of chapters ago when it just got into detail about, you know, that aspect of a woman's normal biology and cycle and that kind of thing basically it's like well that that makes you unclean then anyway uh verse 20 do not defile yourself by having sexual intercourse with your neighbor's wife okay so now we've branched out beyond just you know familial relationships and we've gotten to you know, neighbor's wife could have absolutely no blood relation whatsoever. But, you know, that would still cause tension between you and your neighbor in all likelihood. Plus, you're being unfaithful to your own spouse. And so, yeah, anyway. Verse 21 do not permit any of your children to be offered as a sacrifice to Molech, for you must not bring shame on the name of your God. I am the Lord. Okay, that seems a bit of a random insert given the broader context, but, um, I mean, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think Molech was, you know, a little G God of a different belief that there were... You know, like, as part of the rituals and things like that of that belief system, there was a very, like, sexual nature to those. Anyway, uh, verse 22. Do not practice homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. And this comes in as a bit of a rub for... A lot of people in this day and age. Um, but. it It's just kind of spelled out there plainly. <laughs> Not really too much uh, wiggle room in that. Just. Yeah, don't do it. This specifically says having sex with another man is with a woman. It does not say woman to woman there specifically. But again, that still falls under the broader definition of homosexuality. So I think it's kind of safe to say that that's probably included in this as well. And again, if you go back to God's original design, he made male and female for a reason. I'm not going to get into too much more detail there. Um, it, 
I will say though, it does not specify. I mean, this this is talking about you know the physical sexual act. This is not saying specifically about like just close relationships in other senses because as we will eventually read there are examples of you know people being very close relationally but not like intimately or sexually in that kind of way and so anyway that's all I'm going to say on that matter uh, verse 23, a man must not defile himself by having sex with an animal and a woman must not offer herself to a male animal to have intercourse with it. This is a perverse act. And even in our, you know, kind of modern day liberal or at least more liberal sense of things still very much looked down upon in the vast majority of, you know, People groups. Um, and yeah, just, just no. <laughs> anyway, uh, verse 24 Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways. For the people I am driving out before you have defiled themselves in all these ways. Because the entire land has become defiled, I am punishing the people who live there. I will cause the land to vomit them out. You must destroy... <laughs> Sorry, rewind that. <laughs> you must obey all my decrees and regulations. You must not commit any of these detestable sins. This applies both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. Okay, so not only is God saying that these things are wrong, he's also saying that the people being driven out from the land you're about to go into are doing these kinds of things. This is part of what I mean when I say don't act like those people. So, uh, let's see here, verse 27, and then I guess I'll wrap this up. All these detestable activities are practiced by the people of the land where I am taking you, and this is how the land has become defiled. So do not defile the land and give it a reason to vomit you out, as it will vomit out the people who live there now. Whoever commits any of these detestable sins will be cut off from the community of Israel. So obey my instructions, and do not defile yourselves by committing any of these detestable practices that were committed by the people who lived in the land before you. I am the Lord your God. So, these types of things... Um, I'll give a prior example of Sodom and Gomorrah. Those cities practice these kinds of things. Uh, I mean, homosexuality was very specifically mentioned as an example in that instance. And it, it just, the, the, the people there were so sexually driven that they basically have sex with anything or at least any one seemingly and that just it deteriorates any sort of sense of like you know family or community structure especially family structure um because you've got all these complicated relationships going on and, you know, people having reason to be jealous of other people that are otherwise very close to them. And so, again, there's like the practical aspect of, you know, not complicating the lives of the people around you <laughs> for, you know, <laughs> to keep it simple. Um, 
But then again, there was also the aspect of all this that like God wanted his people to be different from all the other people groups around them. And considering these were things that those people did, probably, I mean, I'm going to say in part, at least, because of their religious beliefs, the deities that they worshipped, and, you know, as I mentioned with Molech, you know, there were rituals and things like that dedicated specifically to those deities that were of a sexual nature. And I I think part of this and part of the reason all these commands are here is that, you know, God didn't want, you know, practices from other religions finding their way into his people and their daily lives because then that would not make them, you know, different from the other people around them. But anyway, um, yeah. While there is potentially opportunity to discuss, you know, modern day issues and how this relates to them, I'd really rather not go on too much about that. I'm focusing more so on just looking at the verses and what they have to say and maybe trying to understand why they say that. So anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's going to do it for chapter 18. Okay, so um, basically just a lot of (laughs) forbidden relationships uh, or at least forbidden for things to get too close Let's just put it that way. And a lot of it pretty much revolved around, hey, um, don't complicate the family dynamic. And that's about as PG of a version as I can give for all that. Anyway, okay. So, that's all I've got for now. Um, As always, like and share if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get updates when I post new videos. Look down in the description to get info on other social media pages and all that good stuff. And leave comments below that with any thoughts you have. So, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I'll uh, see you for the next chapter. But until then, stay cool, people.